Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy, with another special guest on my gratitude podcast interview. And today, uh, I refer to him as a nice, just a great young man. Anybody who's younger than me is a great young man that I've known a number of years, and uh, he's become a good influence on me and just a super guy, Jeff Ryder. Jeff, welcome to the podcast. Good to be here, David. It's good to see you. So let me start you off with a, a question. What has been your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic? You know, that's an interesting question. I, I think there's been so many things that have allowed me to cope well with this pandemic. And it really started several years ago. It isn't something that I'm doing right now or that I've changed in my life per se to cope mm -hmm. with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, several years ago, as you know, I kind of started down this path of maybe a, a rediscovery of myself, if you will, or yeah. just sort of trying to uh, better myself or, or become more aware of my feelings of myself and, and where I'm at in this world. And, and a part of that process has been meditation. Oh, great. And so I, you know, I maybe starting three years ago or so, I started to meditate every day and I can't tell you how significant that process has been on my That's life. And, and so, you know, I've continued to meditate every day uh, very diligently. And during this COVID-19 uh, pandemic I you know at, at times I'll, I'll meditate twice a day or more a day and it's just a very comforting relaxing process for me and, and that's probably been a very key thing for me that's uh, that's and then in, in addition you know there's other things that I started to do you know months or years ago that are, again have really helped me through this COVID-19 process I've changed my diet. I've become more of a vegetarian type diet. I very rarely, Excellent. in fact, in 2020, I've, I've not eaten meat. You know, so oh, great. I, well, I was already kind of on that process in 2019, mm -hmm. but I still occasionally did eat meat. But in 2020, I, I don't, and I, I feel a lot better, just kind of lighter. I, I, oh, that's great. Um, and then uh, the other thing that I've done is um, so diet, meditation exercise weight loss oh my gosh i mean you know since since uh, the beginning of the year i've lost almost 20 pounds oh fantastic so, you know that that's just been another thing that's just kind of helped me cope through this covid 19 process but i started it before yeah. yeah so um i really haven't changed that much of what i do you know during this covid 19 process i'm just still continuing to do those things that i started before that's great. You already had, it sounds like, and I know that from even, uh, conversations you and I have had in the past, you've already had some pretty good disciplines, and it sounds like they just got even fine-tuned as an example of the meditation, yeah. which is fantastic, yeah. too. And, and, and then along with that, another thing that I've started to do, and this is kind of a key thing and may surprise you, mm. is I've greatly limited my beer intake. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it surprises me, or I'm just really happy to hear that. <laughs> Well, you know, it kind of goes along hand in hand with this whole process of being, you know, meditation, becoming more aware of myself and my feelings. I mean, I don't want to get too philosophical about all that. Sure. But, you know, I kind of thought, you know, well, if I'm going down this path, well, why am I drinking beer every night? You know? Right, right. I mean, wait, let's cut that out and let's just kind of see where I'm at, you know, because it kind of dulls your awareness to drink beer. So, exactly, you know? exactly. Well, I'm and very, I'm happy then, to hear that. And then in terms of diet and all, you know, I, I you know, losing weight, I, you know, I really wanted to get my weight down. Well, beer doesn't help that. And, you know, I, That's it, good. There's, things that I miss, there's things that I miss about it in terms of the social aspects, sure. you know, the people that I hang out with and talk to, but a lot of that's gone away now with the COVID-19 mm -hmm. thing. So it's made it a little easier that, well, I'm not going down to the local pub and, and drinking beer like I used to anyway. So, Exactly. So that has been another huge thing. That's um, great. That's in fact, in the month of April, you know, I had a goal for my, myself. You know, you've heard of dry January. People oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of the year, dry January, they don't drink. Yep. Well, we did that. Yeah. Oh, good. We, we just got back from a cruise. Excellent. <laughs> so, Excellent. Yeah, we got on the cruise before the whole COVID-19. Oh, that thing. was fortunate. Uh, it, was, it was a wonderful cruise and all that, but, you know, you drink like you can't imagine on these right. things so when we got back we got back from the cruise we said hey let's just do dry january that makes a lot of sense and so 
we did that and, and, and it really worked out well for us. And we really enjoyed that time, um, not drinking, just kind of being as ourselves, if, if you will. Yeah. And I thought, well, okay. We kind of carried that on. We didn't do dry February or I say we, my wife and I, we didn't do uh, dry February or dry Mars, but greatly decreased how much right. what we right. did. And now April, I'm doing dry April again. That's good. Well, well it's, it's very yeah. good for you. And those are, those are some great reminders to the meditation and not drinking as much and exercise and so forth. And so now you know, me is, is that gratitude guy. So that middle name has kind of become my, uh, my mom, yeah. if you will, did you sure. find, what are you, are you still grateful for the same things? Has it changed since before coronavirus to now what you're most grateful for? Well, good thing you brought that up. I have my gratitude book right Excellent. here. <laughs> Excellent. Great we're, in my office here. we're in my office here at home and my book sits right here, you know, so. That's actually. Well, I, I don't, I, I, I probably, I'd have to go back and look, you know, I'm not aware that it, it's really changed that much. I mean, okay. I, you know, in terms of being grateful for health and grateful for health of my family. And, uh, you know, I, I still am grateful for those things. Um, yeah. I'm not, I, I couldn't tell you that I, there's anything really different in that okay. process. I, I probably, I, you know, to be perfectly honest, I don't write in it every day. Mm -hmm. I probably write in my gratitude journal more. Yeah. Now. Good. Good. Well, that's it. certainly good. And my attitude always is, I mean, of course I, as I, I'm a proponent of the gratitude journals and the ones I sell. I tell people I, I really think it's powerful to write in it every day because if it makes you feel yeah. better. Don't you want to feel better every day? But if somebody is writing it every other day or occasionally or a bullet point, uh, you know, that's all I can ask for. And just keep keep adding to that and so forth. And so, yeah. So, yeah. so another question, Jeff, is if I think about knowing you and Lori as well as I do and the things you've done, any thoughts or ideas or tips or you would tell people to do things while they're kind of sheltering in place? Because you've always had a lot of activities that you guys have done. And, and somebody, some people may not be as imaginative as you are or as creative, but any thoughts to, to something that other people might be able to do while they're in their homes? Probably not anything different than what most people do. I mean, okay. Again, going back to the things that we were doing that we're continuing to just do. I mean, we, yeah. we've always done, you know, I've been semi-retired now for the last two and a half years or so. And we do a tremendous amount of puzzles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so uh, we have a huge puzzle that we're doing up, you know, just it's one of those things that we come together and work on the puzzle. It's very kind of calming and something we do together. We play a lot of games together yeah. at Cribbage and, and what have you. We play, uh, my, my daughter is here. Uh, oh, you know, excellent excellent so my, my older daughter who works downtown seattle you yep. know her business is all self-quarantined right now and so yep. she was just sort of left in her apartment and working from home she still has a job and she works every day but she was able to work from home so she's here now and so we're spending a lot of time obviously with her and, and doing it with her we um we walk a lot Mm -hmm. So we do go outside. We we live in a rural area, and there's a really nice remote path right oh, by nice. my house. We walk out the front door, walk up the street, and there's the path. Nice. And it's a, a seven mile round trip, and so we do that maybe three times a week. That we go out and we walk, uh, and it's a family. My wife and I, and my daughter, we we all go together. Excellent. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, again, um, other things that we might do, we, we have bonfires at night. We, things that we kind of go, we, we stay together and kind of hang out together and talk. And, um, well, what I, what I kind of like, Jeff, that I kind of hear from you that I can't say has always been the same from some other, some other people, you kind of already were on a pretty good path. And as you yeah. said, they're semi-retired a couple of years ago, and then just, but just some of the things, cutting back on the beer, doing the hiking, doing the bonfires, doing the puzzles, whatever might be keeping busy. So I think you're already kind of on a good path. So it's kind of like it just maybe, you know, just more of the same, if you will, because I've talked it, to other people that it, were, I got to change this and that and so forth. Yeah, it, it has been uh, much more of the same, maybe a little more intently. Like I said, maybe I write in the graduate journal more, maybe I mm -hmm. meditate a little more than I did before. And so, you know, you do feel, I do feel a certain amount of stress from mm -hmm. this whole situation. Yeah. So it's good to sort of be able to acknowledge that and, and to release that or, you know, at least yeah. acknowledge that I am stressed, you know, yeah. not bury it or, or try and, or, you know, try and, uh, right. 
right. I, because I am. Um, I am. I'm worried about my mom. You know, my mom's healthy and 77 years old, but here she is all by herself now in, in yeah. North Seattle. I, when I worry about my other daughter in, down in downtown Seattle, I, mean, I hope I don't. You know, what's odd? I personally do not know anyone that has contracted coronavirus. That's the same. As, I think that's interesting. That's the same as me. And it, it's, you see it on the news every day, but I've had a number of, I, I'm trying to think of anybody I even knew that knew of somebody personally. So it's, uh, it's interesting. That's a little different. Yeah. I don't know of anybody and I knock on wood. I hope I don't meet any, I, I hope I don't know anybody in the yeah. future. And I, and yeah. I certainly hope my, I, like I said, I, I do feel a great deal of stress about my mom in particular being yeah. old. Well, and I think acknowledging that stress, whether it's your mom or other things too, is, is the old thing is half the battle. And then you decide how to, how to, to manifest that exercise more, write in the gratitude journal more often, whatever it might yeah. be. I mean, yeah. even the puzzles and the bonfires, all those things are de-stressors and yeah. things like that. So, so uh, the other thing I do, just one other thing is I yeah. read a lot. I read a lot. Oh, that's, that is that the, the, we live in the reading capital of the world, right? In Seattle, yeah. I read, I, oh God, I have, you know, three or four books waiting in the wings and I'm constantly reading books. So. That is a great point. I've heard a number of other people say they got caught up on reading and things as well. So, uh, so great. So great ideas. That's exactly what I was looking for. And so last question is, do you have what you would call kind of a, a quote or a saying or a mantra? Some people have said Bible verses or things that kind of sustains you or sort of your philosophy that you would say for Jeff's life or Jeff and Lori's life that sort of just this, this thing that kind of directs you, whether it's through a tough time like this or uh, just in general, if you will? Um, yeah. <laughs> I have one up on my reader board here. Oh, excellent. But it, it really isn't a coronavirus <laughs> related That's quote. Gender. That's okay. But it was, it was a quote that I have that I saw a couple years ago that I wrote down, and I leave it up on my reader board here. It's from a guy known by Neil Donald Walsh. Okay. Um, remember that person? Mm -mm. And he, he said, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Mm, oh, I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, anyway, that's my quote. <laughs> that's that's a reminder that, you know, sometimes I, get too comfortable in my everyday routine and you know you have to sort of get out there and if you really want to experience life yeah you that's know, good stretch, I forgot your, that. stretch yourself a little bit that's, that's a great point and sometimes at a time like this where we don't have uh, people get stir crazy and they get uh, you know house fever or what do you want cabin fever and so forth so that is good because we definitely have to stretch yourself and that makes a big difference so that's excellent. Well, listen, thank you, my friend. Just as I suspected, great tips and thoughts and ideas, and uh, I appreciate it, and we will chat soon. Thanks, David. Good to see you. You too.